Hello buddy, my name is Eric and today we're going to be taking a look at something called EasyFN. Now EasyFN is not just for letters, it is apparently an old school Fortnite. And a lot of people are really concerned that it's malicious. Now most of these do not read like the kind of thing that someone who knows a lot of it. I don't mean this is an insult, I just mean I don't think most of the theories here are necessarily accurate. So we're going to check this out. I've had a couple of emails about it, and at first I thought, you know, there's probably not anything here, so I'm not going to do it, but it seems to be a lot of concern. So let's see, either we're going to alleviate that concern or we're going to blow the whistle. So either way, we win. So this is the launcher. Now I'm going to be testing this on a Windows VM, of course. Okay, I don't, I don't like this. This is the official website. I never like this kind of thing. So he, okay, I think I've already solved the mystery. Okay, and then we've got a nest of Google ads. So what are we downloading from here? Now this is where I think the Trojan allegations come from. And this is why, sometimes people comment, why don't you use adblock on your VMs or whatever? Well, I could say, you know, I, I do have some res- I, I don't necessarily think ad blocking is a great thing for free content on the internet, but that's not actually the reason. The reason is, I am not going to say that something is safe if it has- anything on it that isn't. Like, if there's hidden ads that are malicious that I would otherwise not know about, uh, well, then I'm telling you the site is safe, and then we just download something that this is absolutely sketchy. So let's see where this is going. We're going to S3, Amazon, AWS. We've got a setup file and a zip file. Yikes. There is, there's nothing good in this. Okay, so, and now we've got, uh, executable with a suspiciously high compression ratio, which I also really don't like. Okay, let's try, let's try virus total. I've got a default icon here. Now these malicious, this is more like a survey gateway than an ad, but it's like an ad, are designed to trick you into thinking that this is the download for EasyFN. Now it's not quite as bad as the ones that we've seen on places like Buzz Heavier, but okay, adware, grayware, so it looks like this isn't going to be a full-blown Luma Stealer, but I will just run it just to validate that. But let's let's run this now. Yeah, it's it's a pop. So a pop is a potentially unwanted program. This is something you probably don't want on your computer, but it's also not going to steal your bank account. But what I don't like is instead of opening, because usually pops. Okay, okay, this opening is just being. Ew, okay, yeah, I don't like that. Well, let's just wait and see what it does. Stry okay, so this is self extracting and it's a bit of a math error there. 122% extracted. And oh, we've got Espanol as our default language, but we'll go with English. Uh, Winamp installer. Okay. It does look like it's actually Winamp, but what? Adding firewall records? Mm. I don't know if that's I don't know if that's legit Winamp, but okay. Let's see where this file came from. So, and from Jaffa Cakes, we've got a triage link. Now, of course, the issue with a lot of these automated sandboxes is any program that installs is going to get a high score. So does it actually do anything? Yeah, that's a bit yikesy. And that's normal for installer. So there's nothing in here that implicitly says this is malware, but... Oh, and it's unable to download a DirectX component, but let's just see if we launch WinApp. Now we're getting a UAC prompt. Something else I don't have to see, but at least it is verified. So it's probably, okay. So there is a there is ultimately WinAmp in here and possibly a couple of bonuses. So now let's try and actually download the real thing. So we've completed the offer and now it looks like we did actually get the download we were after. I'm just gonna go to our download. Okay, so yeah, that did come from their actual CDN, and you could theoretically uh, get around that. So, now let's run the launcher. So now we have to make an account for EasyFN. So let's just do that. Now, Discord member Clara Crazy has her own anonymous email server that isn't on the deny list for a lot of these services, so I'm going to use that so that we don't have to use a real email address. So, port, gibbity, so we'll just, we'll, we'll make it look like we're a legit player. I only got more ads, so that's a good sign. Yes, yeah, some more Fortnite skibbity. And we should now be able to download EasyFN. So we can have season four or season seven. Now it shouldn't matter. And I'm also gonna take a look at this client application because 
realistically, if there is malware in here, it's probably going to live in the client application. Because I have a feeling people don't see it, like this isn't super sophisticated. So let's take a look at what's going on with this client installation. It's easy installer. Is that from? Yes, it is. Let's see where this exe lives. No, it's not signed. And this is the file I think people are uploading to virus total and getting scary stuff from. So let's just confirm that. Because that's like the main real reason. Okay, it's not this bit. Okay. Check the other files. And it is in fact a Rust application, which isn't great for reverse engineering, but it's not a bad, I, I'm all for using the Rust language. So I'm gonna guess this is probably a Towery app given, uh, given this looks like a web view. So this is almost halfway there. And we can verify that this actually works. Okay. Let's also take a look at this easy installer file, what you've got going on. Now you've got some hits. Got a Win32, uh, uh, that's that's not relevant. So you got some, listen, is this also, oh, this is a Pi installer. So this is very much possible to learn more about. I move this out and then we can take a deeper look at this. Now this finished downloading, so we can take a look and see what it actually looks like. That's kind of weird. It's actually running easy anti-cheat. How does that even work? Don't you... Have they reverse engineered the servers for easy anti-cheat as well as... Because they can't... They can't be using their own kernel driver because it's not signed. So they must be... Okay, well then, whatever. I don't have an issue with that. It's just kind of unexpected. This is just sort of a private server then. Okay. Do that. Now, of course, the way these things work is they have some understanding of how the backend works and then they're able to simply simulate it so let's try this out and go into a real game and we can go into matchmaking and depending on how popular this private server is we'll see how long this takes so and this says it's eu i don't know if that's just to do with how they've set up the client because it would not make a lot it, it didn't give an option for it and the ping's going to be pretty abysmal because i live very far away from Europe. It is EU. Oh, wow. I actually kind of remember this. <laughs> now, I was never big into Fortnite, but I do I do actually remember when the game looked like this. I think they're... Okay, yeah. Let's try and go to Tilted Towers. I know that was the... I don't know if it was the best thing to do, but it was what people did. It was, po it was the popular thing to do. Okay, we're getting some frame drops, but yeah, I mean, it's playing at a high resolution, so that's fine. Oh, it's... Oh yeah, we we break down, yeah. <laughs> I haven't played this game in 10 years. <laughs> Maybe not, not 10 years, but like a long time, okay. Okay, and we need to see, can we get some weapons? Yes. Yes, we can get weapons. Of course, you can't really play Fortnite without sound. I don't have sound pals through my VMs, but I think we get the idea. Ooh, I got killed without even seeing it, but okay. So the game definitely works, and it's exactly as advertised. So I'm just going to take a bit of a look at that installer app, but there's really, there's so far, the only thing that I don't like about this is this website that they've got is littered with malicious stuff, and I could totally believe that people are getting dodgy malware from this site. But as far as I can tell, everything here looks legit, and we can see there's plenty of big YouTubers who've been using it. You know, one of the easiest things we can do is just look through the strings and see, all right, is there anything in here that could be a bit off? So we'll look for HTTP. No red flags in here. I was checking for a couple of things. Something that could look like any C2 servers, indications of popular Python malware. There's nothing, nothing super sketchy here. And using a free and open source tool, we can actually extract what's going on in here to get a better idea. Now, the file we're mostly interested in is going to be the easy fnv2 pyc file so we can just go to pylingual which is a free online python no oh, pylingual's down i mean looks like we've got a cli app here yep we do so we've got a pretty straightforward what we've got going on here this then works with the gui app nothing here looks very suspicious final thing we can do is just go to our MITM proxy. We'll turn that on. I'm going to check. Is there any indication that data is leaving this computer and going to their servers that we do not want? So my, my usual process is I will kill any processes related to the application. 
uh, now that we're under under surveillance, and then we'll relaunch it. I'll just make sure there's nothing, oh, no EZFN stuff going. So we run it, and here I've got every related API call. Desktop, EZFN.app. Uh, first of all, we're checking for updates. Okay, nothing sketchy here. Although there is the ability, which I was going to add as a disclaimer anyway, but there is the ability for over-the-wire updates. So fundamentally, we can conclude, I'm just going to go through these and make sure there's nothing here that looks like spyware. Probably some, There's probably a session token in here. I, I'm not planning on playing this again. And yep, it's a Tauri app. So that will make sense. So ultimate conclusion. All the evidence we have points to this not being any sort of malware. Biggest thing to watch out for on the site is the ads and that survey gate. Uh, you might be able to minimize that with an ad blocker. Uh, I would just, it, when you're, if you're downloading this, be very diligent. That would be my advice. This version of the software doesn't seem to have anything of concern. There is the fundamental risk, especially when you're using an unofficial project, right? This is not endorsed by the developers of Fortnite. Uh, this is really a legal gray area, what they're doing. You do have the risk. And that is, if you don't trust the people making this, you should not use it. Is it currently malicious? No. Could it be in the future? Sure. But overall, uh, there's no reason to believe this version is malicious, so they get a mostly clean bill of health. So that's going to be all for me for now. Please let me know in the comments below what you thought of this video, if you have other questions, and of course, if you have something you want checked out, look, I, obviously I can't do everything that gets asked for, but if I see a lot of requests or something looks off, I do check it out. It's all from me for now. Bye.